Hey, this is Dr. K from iMedical School, and this is the first part of our series on antibiotics. Today's discussion will be on penicillins. So let's go look at our outline. Today's topic will cover penicillin, aminopenicillins, penicillinase-resistant penicillins, carboxypenicillins and uridopenicillins, as well as beta-lactamase inhibitors. Remember, the key to antibiotics is always start broad if you do not know what you're treating, and then tailor your antibiotic therapy as culture data comes in. Now, let's take a look at penicillin. There are multiple types of basic penicillins. There's penicillin G, which is IV formulation, penicillin V, which is oral formulation, procaine penicillin, which is usually given IM, and benzathine penicillin, which is also given IM. The coverage for penicillin includes beta hemolytic strep, strep pneumonia, Neisseria meningitidis, anaerobes such as Clostridium, Bacteroides, Fusobacterium, and Peptostreptococcus, usually seen in the oral flora or GI tract, Listeria monocytogenes, Multocyta, and Streptobacillus, Spirillium, Trypanema palladium, Burgdelia burgdorferi, and Actinomyces israeli are also covered by penicillin as well. These are some of the bacteria that are covered by basic penicillin, but it's important to understand our current clinical use of penicillins. So penicillin is used in strep pharyngitis and soft tissue infections. Penicillin benzathine or IV is the drug of choice for syphilis. IV penicillin is used in the treatment of meningitis caused by Neisseria, as well as strep pneumonia and Listeria. It's important to note that penicillin is renally excreted and has to be adjusted if a patient has acute kidney injury. Now let's move to our next class of penicillins called amino penicillins. Examples of amino penicillins include ampicillin, which can be given IV or orally, or amoxicillin, which is generally given orally. Note that amoxicillin has generally better GI absorption than ampicillin. Amino penicillins generally cover strains of E. coli, Proteus mirabilis, Salmonella, Shigella, and beta lactamase negative bacteria, including Haemophilus and Moraxella. The clinical uses of amino penicillins is really important to take a look at. We commonly use amino penicillins like amoxicillin and ampicillin for otitis media due to strep pneumonia, beta lactamase negative Haemophilus infections, infections with Enterococcus. And then occasionally, for those who do have an indication for endocarditis prophylaxis, if they are undergoing a GI or GU procedure, then we use that as that type of prophylaxis. In addition, Listeria meningitis is also covered with IV ampicillin. Remember that we also use vancomycin and acephalosporin for broadly covering meningitis. For aminopenicillins, they are eliminated renally and must be adjusted if there is acute kidney injury presence. Let's talk about penicillinase resistant penicillins. Examples of these penicillins include oxacillin, which is IV, nafcillin, dicloxacillin, and cloxacillin. The coverage for penicillinase resistant penicillins is as follows. It's generally used for methicillin-sensitive Staphylococcus aureus, as well as Group A Streptococcus. To keep in mind, these penicillins do not cover the following. Anaerobes, Gram-negatives, as well as Enterococcus. Now let's talk about the clinical uses of penicillinase-resistant penicillins. They're generally used for the treatment of soft tissue infections due to group A strep and MSSA. They are the drug of choice for treatment of bacteremia slash endocarditis that's caused by MSSA. This was compared to vancomycin treatment and found superior to vancomycin. Now keep in mind this is MSSA and not MRSA. Penicillinase resistant penicillins are the only class of penicillins that are not renally cleared. For example, nafcillin is cleared through the liver. Thus, it is important to know if a patient has cirrhosis or acute hepatic failure when prescribing these antibiotics. Remember that the IV agents in this class do penetrate the CNS when there is active inflammation, so they may be used in meningitis. Now, let's move to the next class, carboxypenicillins and 
uridyl penicillins. Examples include carbenicillin, ticarcillin, which is a carboxy, and piperacillin. The coverage includes, starting with carboxypenicillins, broader gram-negative spectrum than ampicillins. They do not have good activity against staph or strep, and there's absolutely no activity against enterococcus or Klebsiella. Uridopenicillins have a broad spectrum of activity against gram-negative bacteria. In addition, piperacillin has greater activity than carbenicillin and ticarcillin against Enterobacteriaceae and Klebsiella. This class is more active against H. fluenza and Marxella than ampicillin. And piperacillin is also known to work better than ticarcillin against Bacteroides fragilis. Uridopenicillins have less activity against staph and strep than ampicillin. It's important to note that these antibiotics are used against polymicrobial and nosocomial gram-negative infections. If you're treating Pseudomonas, give it carboxypenicillin in combination with an aminoglycoside or ciprofloxacin. For example, you can use a zosin and cipro combination. For serious infections of Enterobacter and Pseudomonas, the combination that we generally use are again zosin plus an aminoglycoside or a ciprofloxacin. An ultimate regimen could be zosin plus gentamicin. Now let's take a look at beta-lactamase inhibitors. The examples of beta-lactamase inhibitor combinations include amoxicillin clavulanate, otherwise known as augmentin, and ticarcillin clavulanate, otherwise known as tamentin. In addition, piperacillin slash tazobactam is known as zosin, and ampicillin selbactam is known as unison. The coverage of these antibiotics include very good activity against beta-lactamase producing organisms like MSSA or methicillin sensitive staph aureus, Bacteroides fragilis, Moraxella. In addition, Haemophilus influenza as well as Klebsiella pneumonia are both covered as well. Not protect against methicillin resistant staph aureus. Note, beta-lactamase inhibitor combinations. Do so we just reviewed briefly over the different aspects of penicillins, including their coverage and clinical use. If you like this video, give it a like. If you have any questions or topics you want me to discuss, put a comment down below. And subscribe if you like these series of videos that I do. Also, remember to check out medpulse.org for other videos and articles. This is Dr. K from iMedical School. I'll see you